T minus nine minutes and counting. T minus nine minutes and counting. And the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. Pilot Baker is now flipping switches in the orbiter's crew module. Copy. And he has directly connected the three fuel cells to the essential power buses. The orbiter's crew access arm will be attracted away from the vehicle momentarily. This arm can be re-extended in just a few seconds if necessary. Yeah, let's go for OAA retract. T-minus, seven minutes and counting. At the T-minus six minute mark, Pilot Baker will be asked to configure the orbiter APUs, put them in the ready to start configuration. PLT OTC perform APU pre start. APU pre start in work. OTC PLT APU pre start complete, three gray talkbacks. Copy. T-minus six minutes and counting. The APU pre-start has been performed. They will actually be started at the T-minus five minute mark. The APUs provide hydraulic power to the orbiter. Coming up now on start of the auxiliary power units. Okay, let's go for orbiter APU start. PLT OTC perform APU start. APU start and work. CDR OTC reconfigure heaters. That, that's in what? Commander Weatherby is, uh, is Copy. Hey, reconfig complete. Copy. Commander Weatherby reports we have con configured the heaters for launch. 
and pilot Mike Baker reports we've got three good APUs. T-minus four minutes and counting. Final purge of the main engines is underway. Main engine valves are being opened to prepare for engine start. At the one minute point in the count, an engine ready indication will be given. A profile test of the orbiter's aero surfaces is underway. The orbiter flight control surfaces are being moved through a pre-programmed pattern to verify they are ready for launch. Three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. Columbia now is transferring to internal power and the ground power supply is being turned off. T minus three minutes and counting. All systems. Pressurization of the external tank, liquid oxygen tank for launch has started at this time. In just a few minutes, the gaseous oxygen vent hood will be retracted. Pilot Baker reports Columbia's caution and warning memory system has been cleared for flight. At the two minute point, the flight crew will get instructions to close and lock their visors for flight. Columbia OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, and our thoughts ride with you today. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's go for EP LH2 pressurization. Liquid hydrogen replenishment is being terminated and LH2 pressurization to flight level is underway. All systems are go for launch at this time. Just a few minutes away from the 13th voyage of Columbia on a 10-day science gathering flight. One minute, 30 seconds. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. Columbia's launch marks the seventh flight this year. The six member crew, including the third Canadian payload specialist to fly on the shuttle, is about to begin their first flight day for mission STS-52. T-minus one minute and counting. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. T-minus 31 seconds. Okay, let's go for auto sequence start. Columbia's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T-minus 20 seconds. T-minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for engine start. Mission and liftoff of Columbia on an ambitious 10-day international
back at two thirds power. Three engines on Columbia now back at full throttle. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Altitude at 12 miles. Columbia is nine miles east of the launch pad. Current speed, 2,100 miles an hour. Columbia has now burned more than two and a half million pounds of propellant since its liftoff. Shuttle now weighs less than half of what it did a minute and 50 seconds ago. Flight control is now standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms a good solid rocket booster separation. Altitude now 28 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 34 miles. Columbia traveling 3,100 miles an hour. Two engine banjo, Columbia. Two engine banjo. And Columbia Houston, performance nominal. Call indicates that Columbia could perform a transatlantic landing in the end of an engine failure. Three engines continue to operate well at full throttle. Also, Columbia's performance is right on target at this point. Altitude 39 miles. Downrange from the launch pad 60 miles. Columbia traveling 3,500 miles an hour. Three minutes and 45 seconds since launch, altitude miles. Columbia is now above most of Earth's atmosphere and beginning to level off and accelerate downrange. Columbia's speed now 4,400 miles an hour, 119 miles east of the Kennedy Space Center. Negative return, Columbia. Columbia has now gained too much speed and altitude to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. Three engines continue to operate well at full throttle. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Columbia Houston, press to ATO. Press to ATO. Columbia has now gained enough speed that it could attain a safe orbit in the event of an engine failure. Altitude now 57 nautical miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 167 miles. Columbia is traveling 5,700 miles an hour. Press to Miko, Columbia. Columbia can now press to its planned orbit in the event of an engine failure. Altitude 60 nautical miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 230 nautical miles. 